the future to come in 20 to 30 years? Can it be predicted in the times of global uncertainty? How to map out the contours of the future so that they are more clear and bright? And what can be done by those who are today called the next generation? In today's episode, finding yourself in the role Since I was little, I knew I want to make some contribution to the world. Why do we exist? We must help each other and make this world a better place. I want to live my life to the fullest, to understand what I am capable of, to understand what else I can do, what I can achieve. Sabina Shinganova is 20 years old. She is a vice president of the International Student Organization and a volunteer, also a founder of the first inclusive theater in Almaty. She studies international relations at Turan University. When I was little, my parents always used to ask me, whose daughter are you, dad or mom's? And I didn't want to offend anyone and used to say, I am Vasya's daughter. I wanted to say, both of you. And for 20 years, they still tell me that all these are merits of some Vasily. I remember that one day I came home and said that when I grow up, I will adopt a child. My parents listened to me, supported me and said yes. <laughs> Students from my university helped me create an inclusive theater. There are many different children in our theater with the special needs. It unites students from 60 universities of Kazakhstan and operates in 38 countries. There are children with an autism spectrum disorder, children with Down syndrome, children from foster families, and there are children who are just shy, different kids. Students develop various projects to improve the world, whether environmentally, socially and economically, improve life through entrepreneurship. Kazakhstan has an issue in the development of an inclusive society. The child's problem is not that he cannot walk, hear or speak, but that he is taken away from average children's games, concerns and interests. And this is because society does not accept them and they go into their shells. If you look socially, inclusion is an acceptance of a person with the special needs into society. That means we are all equal. In Europe, an inclusive society is very well developed. They have inclusive schools, tutors, mentors. They are tolerant, they treat everyone normal, like an ordinary people, as they should be treated. Now, we also have an inclusive school. Let's say they have lessons in the morning. After classes, they have an inclusive sport. After that, they have an inclusive lesginka dance lessons. For children, it has become their second home. We are the team. Thank you so much. For me, it's shocking when a special needs child comes to school or to some team and the parent of a typical child thinks that it's contagious. How can a child infect someone? On the contrary, that is an inclusion. When this special needs child will help a typical child to learn something and he, in turn, will help him. 
It was rather difficult. We helped them and it was really cool when one of the boys managed to say the whole phrase. At first, we thought about making some kind of inclusive films. That way, it would be easier for special needs kids, because there, we could reshoot some scenes. But honestly, I wanted to make a theater. I always dreamed of getting into this theater to see my friends. A child can express himself, everything he thinks about, express his thoughts and show them to other people. Our aim is to bring some thought and depict it for other people. He can talk with the viewer and finally stop being afraid of society. I was afraid, of course. During the final rehearsal, Seva lost the balloons and they flew away. Of course, I was afraid. At the dress rehearsals, Seva behind the curtains released the balloons and they flew away. At my own risk, I said, let's make the theater. We had a forum where we together with the team started presenting our theater to business mentors, business leaders. No one believed in this project, to be honest. They thought it was impossible. Anyway, we overcame this moment, stepped over and went on. And after three months, we staged our first performance. We thought for a long time which play we should stage first. We thought maybe something like the tales of Hans Christian Andersen. But then someone suggested The Little Prince. And that's when I thought, in fact, The Little Prince has a lot of subtext for an adult reader, like the issues of the relationships between adults and children, that adults do not understand children, and it is still relevant. We made a scenario when between the acts, each child goes on the stage and reads his own monologue, monologue about his personal life. He tells about his problems to the audience. Emotions of the parents when their children play? Of course, they have tears of joy in their eyes after their child was able to share his thoughts from the stage with a hundred people. My dad, a 45-year-old grown man, cried at the little prince like a child. After children have performed, they bowed and there was a final song. I stood on the edge and cried. I was just overwhelmed with emotions. People told me, don't cry, people are looking at you. I said, I can't calm down. All that worries when everyone said that we will not succeed. And you see children on the stage, it was very cool. When you see, they did it. Это было очень здорово. То, что у них получилось, они сделали это. Неудобно. Нет, это нормально. Я сама говорю, вчера ролик увидела, расплакалась. Now we are working on Peter Pan. There is also growing up theme. Every child and even every adult does not want to grow up, and for them, this is a big deal. Peter Pan has a scene when Dad scolds his daughter for not growing up, for the fact that she still plays games, dreams of something while looking in the window, and daughter worries that Dad does not understand her. When we stage performances, everyone wins, the child and the parent. The parent finally begins to believe in his child. The child begins to believe in himself. Different victories. There are small, there are big ones. <laughs> I really like the fact that he joined this team, joined this theater. He communicates with children. Katya. 
We have a girl named Katya. She is also unique in her own way. And in The Little Prince, she played Rose. She stood behind the curtains and said, I won't go on the stage. I won't be able to do it, and started taking off her costume. And another student came out instead of Katya and started performing her role. And then, during the second show of The Little Prince, Katya goes on stage and shows her best. She played it so well, she got into this role. It was a must-see. We all have changed. I will speak about the whole team of parents and children and students in general. We have become closer to each other, more open, more tolerant. We stopped being afraid of society, of showing ourselves, going on stage, performing. We realize that we are changing lives. Spectators come up to us and say, thank you, you helped us find ourselves, you helped us believe, you helped us believe in our children, it's great. In September of 2019, we went to Georgia to the festival Inclusive Practice of the Future, Ideas, Research and Innovation. We won in a nomination called Innovation. I did not think we would win something. I just wanted to be heard and believed. There is an inclusive village in Georgia, and families from many countries gather there to develop such projects. They have different projects there. Someone has organized an adult inclusive theater there. Someone has a choir. Someone dances. Someone makes films. Now, I have very few days off, and it's great. I try to work hard. I will not regret getting up early, that I did not have a day off. When, if not now? In addition to studying and theater, I also have work. I study to become a local lore specialist. My hobby is theater, and I work in the marketing department. I am such a versatile person. <laughs> When we were little, Dad used to make us listen to Viktor Tsoi, Zemfira, and my brother and I hated when he called me Ala Pugachova, and my brother, Philip Kirkorov. My dad is a programmer, and when I need help with a project, he helps me create a website. Mom is okay with the fact that I usually not wash the dishes, not on time, because I'm constantly busy. We are all friends in our family. If we gather as a family, we tell each other everything and support. My parents and my brother always come to the performances. Those who are not volunteering, they probably think what kind of an ungrateful work we have, why we waste our nerves and strength. Volunteering gives the volunteer strength, inspiration, friendship. The fact that the state does not leave volunteers unnoticed is very cool. Because when we are students, school children, volunteers, we see that they hear us, they want to help us, we have some strength, we understand that we need to move on. For the further development of the theater, we need to win not audience sympathy, but our society. If you come at least once to this performance, you will already make some contribution to the development of an inclusive society. You will take something for yourself and help both financially and spiritually to the person who is on the stage. We are trying to invest in them everything that remains after us, and they in turn will make their generation even better. Sabina Shinganova plans the performance of her inclusive theater in Nur Sultan. She hopes that this meeting will bring impetus to the country's volunteer movement and motivate students from the capital's university to implement such projects.